So we've got our tables and fields in our database and we've linked them together with relationships. It's time now to look at some queries and how we can create a query using these multiple tables uh, that are linked together with relationships. So we've got um, a small number of borrowers, a small number of books, and we've got a couple of loans. So one of the things that the library might want to know is which books are out on loan and who's got them. So I'm gonna create a query that does that. So I'm gonna to go to the Create tab and Query Design. So the first thing we do when we're creating a query is we think about what information we want to see in the results and where that's going to come from. So we want to see the name of the book and the name of the person who's got it. Now they're stored in separate tables so we need to add both of those. But to be able to find that information we also need the loan table. So I'm going to include all three of my tables. I'm just going to rearrange those so we don't get any crossing lines and just uh, make sure we can see all the fields. So the bottom section gives us um, the fields that appear in the results, just as it did with single um, table field, uh, record um, queries. So what do we want to see about the information that's, uh, about the books that are out on loan? We want to see maybe the title and the author of the book. So we can double click on there. And we want to see who's got them. So the forename and the surname of the borrower. It doesn't matter that they're in separate tables. Access will sort that all out for us. So that's the information we want to see. How are we going to find which books are actually out on loan? So if we have a look at the loan table, does that help us? So all books, regardless of whether they're in or out, will have membership number, ISBN, date out and date due filled in. But date returned will only be filled in when the book comes back. So one way to find books that are out on loan is to have a look in the date returned uh, field and check whether or not it's blank. So we can check whether things are blank by putting null in the criteria field. So what this is going to show us is the title, author, forename and surname for all books where date returned is blank effectively. Now because date returned is going to be you know, blank, we don't want a blank column. So I'm just going to untick the box so we don't see that in the query results. So let's just have a look at the loan table and just to see what we're expecting in the results. So we've got two different people and two different books. So we're going to be expecting um, to be there to be two uh, rows in the results. Neither of them has been returned. So if we run that query now, we can see that uh, John Smith has got SQL in 10 minutes and Joe Bloggs has got a database development for dummies. And if we were to match that up, so is that right? So membership what person one is John Smith, and um, he's got book one, two, three, which is SQL in 10 minutes. So if we look at the query results, that's right, isn't it? Okay, so what about then if um, we can test that just to make sure that it excludes books that have been bought back. So if John Smith brings back his book, um, the date returned field is no longer blank. So um, that shouldn't appear in the query results. So if you run that query again, it's now only got the one row in it. So the only book that's now out is Database Development for Dummies, which Joe Bloggs has. So the query for books um, out on loan isn't too tricky. Uh, so I'm going to save that. I'm going to call it. Um, in fact, before I do that, I'm going to add one extra piece of information because we're going to use this query later on to um, populate a combo box on a form. And to, what we need there is we need a list. We need the ISBN of the book because that's what we're going to be storing in the database. So I'm just going to add that extra information. So it shouldn't affect the results. Um, but I'm going to now save that and I'm going to use the Lisinski Reddit naming convention. I'm going to call it QRY, um, so for short for query books out. Okay, so that's one query done. What about a corresponding query to find out which books are in? So if you want to do a stock take, you need to know which books uh, you're expecting to see on the shelves. So let's have a look at how you might go about that. So create query design. So we want to know, this time we don't need the borrower information because if they're in, then nobody's got them. So what we need is the loan table and just the book information. So how are we going to know whether the book is on the shelf? The problem with this one, this is a bit more tricky because there's two situations where the um, book might be on the shelf. It might have never been lent out, in which case there'll be no records in the loan table 
at all. Or it might have been um, lent out and returned, but it might have been lent out and returned several times and then lent out and not returned. So what we need to do is if we we're going to do a query we need to find out the latest or the last time it was lent out and whether or not it had been brought back. So that's all quite complicated. So what might be a, a simpler thing to do is actually not to use the loan table at all. You can actually use a query in a query. So the easiest um, way to work out which books are in is to say well it's not the ones that are out. So we could use the query we just created so if we click the right mouse button, if we go to show table actually we notice there's a tab here and we can include um, queries. So if we include books out what we want to include is we'll have the title and the author of the book where it's not in books out. Okay so um, ISBN um, is null. However, if we run this query, what we'll see is it's it's blank, and that's because it only shows us records where there's corresponding um, records in each table. And if it's not in the books out, then actually it won't display in table book either. So what we need to do is we need to click on that line and we need to adjust the join properties. So this is quite useful. So in the join properties, what we want to show is all records of the book, all occurrences of books, so all books, um, and only those from query books where the join fields are equal. So rather than only showing records where there's corresponding records in both tables, we want to include all the books um, to make sure that we're not missing any. So if we click OK now, if we run that, what we see is there are three books in. So of the four books, no, that's of the four books, only one is now out on loan, which is that one. So it means that the four books, uh, of the four books, three of them are in. And so if we look at that book, um, that query, and we look at books out as well, we should see that actually, if you combine the two it should give you all of the books. So we've got four books, three of them are on there, and the other one is on there. So between the two queries, you should have the full list of books. So that is a bit more tricky, that one, and that's quite an advanced technique, and it involves changing the degree of the relationship. But once you get into your head that you can do things like that in Access, uh, it just becomes second nature after a while. So that's quite a useful thing to be able to do to change the properties on the relationship. So I'm going to save that query um, after adding um, the ISBN from the book table. So again, um, we might use that on a form later on. So you could use this as a form of validation, couldn't you? So when somebody borrows a book, um, you only need to be able to select from the books that are in because they can't borrow a book that's out. So we could use this um, later on. So let's just check that's still working. Yep, that's still fine. And again, we don't need that column. So I'll save that now as query books out uh, in, sorry, books in. Okay, so we've got those two queries. What else might a library want to know? Well, I suppose the library might want to know uh, which books are overdue. So that's probably quite a common query. So let's have a look at how you might do that. So we'll go to create and query design. And what we want to know, I suppose, is again, which books are overdue and who's got them. So we might want to contact them. So we'll have the book, the borrower, and we need, we need the loan information to find out which ones are overdue, don't we? So we'll rearrange them. So what do we want to see? Well, we want to see which books are overdue. So we'll have the title and the author. Um, we'll have the name and the forename and surname of the person who's got that book. And then you probably want some way of contacting them, so either the telephone number or the address, so that we could um, you know, write them a letter or phone them up and say, I want that book back. So we'll include that. How are we going to find out which ones are overdue? I suppose what we want is ones where, so ones that are out, so similar to books out to begin with, so date returned 
is null, so it hasn't been returned. And again, because that's going to be blank, we don't need to see it. It's not much point having a blank column in the results. But where the date due is before today. So again, we can do a comparison and we can do a, a calculation or use a function. So we could, the date due is less than, i.e. before, um, today. So today's date we can get using the date function. So if we run this query, we'll see that it's not displaying anything because none of the books are overdue currently. But if we go back and we say this uh, book was... Well, if we make them both uh, due back yesterday, so, and the reason for that is, and then we'll say that actually that one was brought back yesterday, then only this book um, 321, which is database development for dummies, which is loaned out to person two, which is Joe Bloggs. So the only book that's overdue is Database for Dummies, uh, which Joe Bloggs has. So let's have a, let's run that now. Yeah, so Database Development for Dummies, Joe Bloggs. So it's correctly identified uh, which book is overdue by looking at whether it's been returned. So it's not been returned. And date due is in the past. So that's three queries that a library might want to do. Obviously, I'll save that and... Um, I'll call it query overdue. So you probably wouldn't want to um, just have a look at that on the screen. What we might want to do with that um, is create a report, which is a letter that we can send to those people. So you could use a report. Reports are for formatting uh, the results of queries or tables for printing, and forms are for formatting them to appear on the screen. So we'll have a look at both of those techniques. Um, but you can use a report to do a sort of mail merge type job. So you could get the uh, access database to print letters to those people to say, please bring that book back. So that's a look at um, just how we can use multiple tables in queries and how we can use things like date functions again to find out which books are overdue.